I'm Batman. Well, I hardly think so. The real Cape Crusader calls his crime-fighting cohorts when he's running late. I had to walk. I couldn't get Raj on the back of my scooter. I said this before and I'll say it again. Aquaman sucks. And good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us here on the Geek End. We are pleased to have you here for our big night, which is supposed to benefit the Operation Underground Railroad, which is an organization that seeks to fight child sex trafficking. It's an incredibly worthy cause. We appreciate you being here. So be sure to scan that QR code and be able to donate towards us. Uh, we are hoping to reach $1,000 tonight, so anything that you could give would be greatly appreciated, and it's going to a really good cause. 100% of the proceeds do go towards them. So one of the things that we're going to be doing this evening, which is going to be a lot of fun for us, because I've been meaning to do a Geek End episode on this for a while, we're actually going to be talking about our top 10 picks for the greatest controller of all time. So let's go ahead and get into it, the best controller of all time we'll go ahead and introduce our panel this evening so yeah we can see him say hi guys uh we got seth kp and ethan so welcome in guys we appreciate you being here and uh what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and get into the top 10 so let's go ahead and start that now the tactics top 10 uh and now here we have number 10 number 10 all right number 10 on this list is one that actually came as a little bit of a surprise to me and you know i wouldn't say they're the worst controller ever but it's not one that i'm particularly fond with number 10 is the joy con <laughs> so I, I gotta be honest didn't see this one coming didn't think that this one was going to make the top 10 but it did so uh why don't we go ahead and i think it was kp that actually was the reason that this one got so high on the list so KB, why don't you tell us about why you love the Joy-Con? And then we'll tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> so, so here's the thing about Nintendo controllers. Sure. And this applies to every single Nintendo controller. They are built to a concept. They are always, sure. always, always built to a specific concept. The Joy-Con controller is about as good an execution. It's not a... It could be better, but only in hindsight. The execution of that concept is probably as good as it could have been for a first for like a first draft almost. And I don't I don't think there is any way I don't think there is any easy way to make it better. My vote for the Joy-Cons keeps in mind their actual purpose. And that's to set out your switch, hand, hand your other controller to a friend and just play a game a multiplayer game wherever you are okay that, that is my case okay yeah uh fine case wrong but you know i appreciate I, it no go ahead Seth. I, was say, I i won't disagree with a lot of that that is the purpose and for the most part they succeeded the biggest problem everyone knows with joy cons is just by far the drift you get which really and truly would have been a relatively simple fix. It may have cost them a little more money, but there are tons of controllers that are proven to be immune to that drift because the drift is primarily caused just by getting dust underneath the little flaps. Uh, in for the most part, it's caused just by getting dust underneath the flaps, the rubber flaps and the controller. Uh, I would like to controller. point out that no controller is immune to drift. They can be immune to drift from that. It Well, they... I don't know of a modern controller that is immune to drift. I mean, not that I'm aware of, but I will say this. The, the reason that I do get frustrated with the Joy-Cons issue with drift is I have a GameCube controller that I bought in 2002, and it does not drift. So, like, how is it that Nintendo made a controller that I think could probably withstand a nuclear apocalypse and not drift? And the Joy-Cons, like, after two weeks, you're experiencing it. That I don't understand. At the very least, I think it could have been significantly better for not too much extra expense. Maybe I'm wrong, but either way, that's why it counted up really low on my list, because I it was still on my top 10. Right. But I had it very, very low. 
Yeah, I'm kind of with Seth on that one. It's just not great execution of the concept. Uh, that was one of the big issues that I had with it. Although I have to say, as much as I do occasionally have some issues with the Joy-Con uh, j joystick drift, my bigger issue, honestly, is just the fact that the buttons are way too tiny. Like, I, you know... I'm a little more forgiving about that on a DS or a, th a 3DS just because I know it's a it's a portable console and so the buttons are going to be small. Is but the, is the Switch not a portable console though? Well, it is, but the thing is they could make a slightly bigger uh, button because mm. there's a lot of open space on that faceplate. Now the motion control is very fluid and I actually like will give it props on that. I'm not just going to just dump on the Joy-Cons. There's some things about it that I really like. The fact that uh, the wireless connectivity is really good. The fact that the uh, motion control is actually really solid. The fact that they packed so much in such a tiny little package. Uh, that's nice. I mean, that's not, it's not a terrible controller from that perspective. It's just, I think that there were way too many drawbacks to make it to my top 10. See, I, my main issue was the, was the motion controls. Um, <laughs> a huge, it, Recently, you know, as VR has become more and more popular, it kind of felt like, like, yeah, like they could have done that so much better. They like, could have, like, like yes, you can, like, with the Joy-Cons, yes, you can, you know, you can swing the sword, but if you move it any, you know, if you move it any amount of anything close to speedily it just goes and the motion control i've never really had too many problems with i think that's actually one of the few good things about the joy con controllers and like the uh the active uh different kinds of rumble like the dynamic rumble is is kind of nice but ultimately this one kind of falls short for me uh but you know it's only number 10 we got nine more to go so let's go I... ahead and, and go to number nine number nine all right, and number nine, uh, I think that this one probably deserves to be on the list, whether you agree with the design as much or not, just for nostalgia reasons. It's the NES, the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Very simple, A, B, select start, D-pad, all you need. And there's a lot to like about this controller. I've always liked it. I mean, it's ergonomics are garbage, but <laughs> it's, it's literally just a rectangle. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's got that classic game feel, and I've spent a lot of really happy hours with one in my hand. And so that's, if nothing else, just thinking about playing Super Mario Bros. 3 or the original Legend of Zelda, uh, it accomplished its purpose. It, it It's not the uh, the pinnacle of controller design by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't know, you, you kind of got to like it. It's the grandpa on this list. It's, the buttons are good. The D-pad is patented, in fact. The NES um, directional pad was and still is somehow one of the best directional pads to have been made. Um, I think it is. I think it has succeeded almost exclusively by the Game Boy and by several and by a lot of newer controllers. But that's it. You think about how many game controllers after the nes i mean just about all of them owe something to the nintendo controller oh yeah so the the nes controller like has to get at least a mention on here if nothing else just mm -hmm. for that because it completely you see some of the controllers that came out before the nes it's not good uh, the nes the the nes for, to its credit nintendo was like let's just do it simple two buttons start select d-pad that's all you need and it worked out great for them. Definitely one of the most nostalgic ones on my on my list. It was... I, I know I'm not that old. I'm not old enough for this that it should have been my childhood, but it was. Because it was the only game system I had growing up till I was like almost 10 or 11. And I spent so many hours playing just a ton of different games on that. And it's just the most iconic one to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, by far. Well, I mean, it, it, it's it's just such a, a feeling to have it in your hand, you know, the well, way I mean, it Seth, digs into your fingers. 
on those corners. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. Seth, what, what you're talking about, there's a reason that Nintendo released a Game Boy Advance SP that specifically mimicked that controller. There's a reason that people walk around with NES controller <laughs> earrings and pins and ties. And all, like it's even people that have no connection to video gaming whatsoever, they don't really play console video games. They see that NES controller, they know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a weirdly iconic design. Mm -hmm. Like, as incredibly simple as it is, it formed the basis for obviously every modern controller, but also for fight pads and for... Um, Could I go back in time, just draw a rectangle and say, this is now iconic? <laughs> <laughs> and get a lot of money for doing that? That's pretty much what it is. The real draw for me was just the simplicity, um, because the, as far as I remember, I have never seen an NES controller wear out, or, you know, wear out or the buttons not work or anything like that. Um, along with that nostalgia, um, have lots of good times with friends playing uh, Contra, and Contra. Okay, you're mm -hmm. a Contra guy. <laughs> I no. can never get past the first level of that game. Yeah, me either. I was bad at Contra. <laughs> I was so Not bad. Not good at Contra. <laughs> oh, I never said I was any good at it. <laughs> I just said it was fun. But I, I so. do I do love what you're talking about because the, the controller is not the best design in, in terms of ergonomics. It's a terrible design. But <laughs> the, the buttons and the D-pad are super durable. Mm -hmm. They're clicky. They're tactile. They feel good in the hand. And so I actually really like that and the the starting like it's it's about the right size <clears throat> now them them corners will like you got to pace yourself if you're going to be playing for a long time because it will dig into you but other than that like a, a really good design and i mean there's a reason that you see this controller this that controller design is basically ubiquitous with everything video game i would have holes in the palm of my hand by the time i got done with that system <laughs> uh, that yeah. controller yeah <laughs> You ever get yeah. like a hand cramp like right there Ooh, in the middle yeah. of your hand because of that? I've I've done that a few times. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I, could also maybe help just you. The just the indentations in the hand. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> discolored skin and all. So I think what we've all described here is that we all have a uh a, a very abusive relationship with this <laughs> controller because we all love it and yet for some reason we are complaining about it hurting us mm -hmm. yes so, <laughs> correct we have a we have a weird relationship with this one <laughs> but anyway all right so let's go on to number eight number eight and number eight on this list the ps5 controllers uh, this is the first one from the current generation ps5 is only a couple years old at this point and they're still sold out so, uh, <laughs> somehow, but yeah, uh, I, I'm going to be honest here. I have not played with a PlayStation five controller enough to have an opinion. And that's the only reason it did not make my list. So it is mm -hmm. not on my list, but it's not because I think that I wouldn't like it. It's just that I, I couldn't in good conscience put it on the list having not played it. So why don't you guys give us a take on that instead? The PlayStation five controller is a fantastic controller. Like, just putting that out there. I have to agree with that. <laughs> but. <laughs> Contractually obligated. It's like, I, I have to agree. Is Sony giving <clears throat> Seth checks that we don't know about? It is a great <laughs> controller, but at the same time, I hate it. <laughs> okay. Just, this episode is where's you, sir? Going? You, sir, just are biased. I, yeah, I'm very, very biased because I'm very used to Nintendo controllers. With this, uh, which one's PlayStation actually? Is that the one with the A, B swapped or no square? It's, uh, square triangle. The one where I have to learn a whole new system of Why hieroglyphics. Why is it on your list if you don't know how to use it? Because I just hit the buttons. I don't pay attention to which one's which. <laughs> uh, but I get mixed up so often. This is cause... not great to hear from my Smash Captain. <laughs> I just press the buttons. I don't care. Just whatever. Look, I know what the Nintendo buttons I, are. I know. I'm just picking it. With you. with PlayStation, with the PlayStation controller, the only reason I have any kind of distaste for it is because I don't like the shapes. Because you don't know how to use it. Yeah, it, it's because I'm very not used to it. I've used every other controller on this list a f at least a few times. I've used PlayStation before. 
probably the I've, I've played I've used PlayStation the least of all of these, and it's just the most unfamiliar. And I just for the life of me, the screen says press X, and I press anything you except press that X. button. I press anything except that button because I don't know which is which is yeah. I press X, which um, is not X. Well, but I mean X. It, that's an easy one, Seth. X is on the bottom, unless you're playing Xbox, in which case it's on the top. Unless you're playing Nintendo, in which case it's on the left. So like, you, you I don't know why you have Nintendo a hard time Xbox. finding X. You just reversed Nintendo and Xbox. I oh, did I whatever. <laughs> I play like... I play GameCube controller. I don't use a pro controller. Oh, and all, with the GameCube controller, it's on the right. Oh no! Oh yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> man, game controllers are like math, like specifically algebra. You're just trying, always trying to find the X. That's right. <laughs> it, it, it's true. Way. It is X, like that. X equals a direction. Pick one, any one. It's in that direction. <laughs> On All right, some well, controller. I'm sure that I will be playing with a PlayStation 5 controller very soon, though, because Final Fantasy 16 is about to come out, and as is tradition, whenever a new Final Fantasy comes out, I buy that console. <laughs> I have Makes yet sense. to play a Final Fantasy game. All right, so sure. Seth is no longer allowed on the weekend after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I Look, they're expensive. No, I get it. I, I am seriously <laughs> looking forward to, to trying out the PS5 controller. You guys it, have got given me some things to think about. It it is a fantastically ergonomic controller. Uh, I'm not. A, hold that I'm thing personally not a fan of the material it's made of. It's it's a very plastically plasticky plastic, but it doesn't. You know, it's far from cheap. It's it's far from cheap feeling. Not that it is cheap. No, it isn't. <laughs> um. But it's it's a fantastic controller. I is I it? don't I don't know that it's an eighty dollar controller, but it's a fantastic controller nonetheless. I mean, well, you know who does know that it's an eighty dollar controller? Sony. So <laughs> they're, the one, they're the ones that matter. So let's go ahead and look at number seven. Number seven. And number seven on our list, we've got another modern controller. This one is the Xbox X series. So. Another great controller. In fact, I actually have mine right here because I'm sitting at my PC right now. So I <laughs> uh, actually do have a custom-made one right here. But yeah, the Xbox X series, really great controller, really good. Like, it's got great uh, feedback on the buttons is, is what I call it. Like, it's when you press down the button, it doesn't mush, and it doesn't just stick up, and you don't have to, like, bear down on it. It's just got that right amount of give. Uh, the triggers are really nice. I really like the control sticks on it. And it seems to be a fairly durable controller. I like how they integrate the Xbox, like the on button sort of into, and it's level with the controller. It's a really nice design. And I have to say, one of the controllers that I do like about it, I know this one's is slightly more controversial, but I like the D-pad on it. I like the fact that, especially with the Elite series, you have sort of an eight-way run, but you still have the feel of a cross underneath your, your thumb. So overall, just a fantastic controller. Gets the job done. I love the little like bump texture underneath that gives you a little bit better grip, and it also helps with like having palms that are too sweaty when you game, which I don't usually have a problem with, but sometimes it's really intense. I will. So Hades. overall, just good design. So my main question is, what's the difference between the the Series X controller and the Xbox One controller? To answer your question and to make my own point. Here we go. There's a reason it didn't change very much. Yeah. Because the Xbox One controller, oh my, how much money was it that they put into designing the Xbox One controller to be as ergonomic as physically possible? Wasn't that their whole like uh, yes. spiel when creating that? It's like, you can hold mm -hmm. on to this thing for That was their years. entire design philosophy. That, that was the pitch they and gave everyone. And they, they succeeded. The thing yeah. is, they didn't change that design because they could not possibly have changed it to make it better. <laughs> ideally, ideally, they could not possibly have changed it to make it more ergonomic. Well, with I think that, they, they nailed the ergonomic so good that I'd say they deserve a hand. With that, with that said, though, unfortunately, it one. falls into the, um, it falls into the kind of gray area that most other modern controllers fall into in that it's a simple four-button design. It's generic. It's used for every game, but it is probably the best controller to use for every game. 
Well, I will say the thing that I like about it personally, and this is just my opinion, I know that there's people that like different things about different <clears throat> controllers, but the thing that I like about the cross button design that you're talking about, KP, and I will say that I actually like this better <coughs> than PlayStation, is it's a bubble button as opposed to a circle button. So instead of having that sharp circle, circular uh, edge, and I, granted, they're both fantastic controllers. I don't have a problem with the way that Sony does it, but the way that Xbox does it with that bubble, it just it feels a little softer on my hand. I don't I don't feel like I get as uh, harsher feedback on on my thumb, and so it's just enough for it to put it over the edge for me. I don't know. I've had issues with Xbox controller buttons before, um, where they they tend to get stuck, and so you know you hit that. Um, you know, you hit the button and it either just, it actuates for too long or it, it stays down. And that's, that's why I like the, oh, that's, an that's why I, that's an original Xbox one controller problem. That's why I like the, the, the PlayStation controllers is mostly that, that shorter actuation. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to number six. Number six. All right, number six is another classic controller, very iconic. It's the Super Nintendo. I personally think that this controller, as much as I do like the icon, the sort of iconic design of the Nintendo, this one fixed that problem with A, making rounded edges, which is way more comfortable in the hand. And another aspect of it that I really like that they improved upon is this, if I'm not mistaken, y'all can check, check, me on this if, if I happen to be incorrect. I already have. Uh, you don't even know what I'm about to say. Yes, I do. Uh, okay. Uh, I believe it was the first one with shoulder buttons. Was that it? Was that what you were thinking? Yes. Okay. What is it the first one with shoulder buttons? Yes. That's what I thought. It's... As much as we would talk about modern controllers owing a lot to the NES, and we did, and it does, like I think that's appropriate, <clears throat> I think you could actually make an argument that the Super Nintendo was more revolutionary yes. and more influential. And the reason is because the addition of shoulder buttons, which we already talked about, and it basically started the four-button cross trend. That's what I was trying to talk about. So, I mean, like, on both sides, this is a controller that a lot of controllers that came after it owe a debt of gratitude to the Super Nintendo. You could, you could look at any controller. It would pay at least somewhat of an homage to the SNES controller. I think that's fair. Just about, I, I think it's just about every other controller hmm. that had some kind of improvement, had one of the improvements the Super Nintendo controller made over the NES controller. I, I just kind of forgot this one existed, even though it was... It is one I had some experience with. It was the fancy controller <laughs> whenever I went to go visit my cousin, and, their, and they had their fancy uh, a Super Nintendo. Uh, so it, I thought it was like this ridiculously high-tech thing, which at the time I'm pretty sure like PlayStation 2s were coming out during the time I was playing that. So... Go, same time as the GameCube and the Xbox. Yeah, same right. time as, like, GameCube and Xbox. All that stuff is out by this point, but, you know, I was a little behind on <laughs> consoles. So I, the, during, during, like, the early 2000s, I thought that was, like, the height of technology. It was... I mean, it was a pretty good jump. <laughs> it was a good jump. I mean, granted, it's nine years... But it's still a gigantic <laughs> jump in technology. But well, anyhow. I know we're talking about controllers specifically, but you know, you notice a really, really big difference between eight bit gaming and sixteen bit gaming. Mm -hmm. You don't notice as much of a leap from like a PS4 to a PS5. Granted, that's not like thirty two bit to sixty four bit. Right. Look at the PS2 to the PS3. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not as big a jump, but it's still a pretty big jump. Mm -hmm. And that's going from 32-bit to 64-bit. Well, and part of that is just naturally we're, we're experiencing the law of diminishing returns. Right. right. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, next console I played after the S SNES was an Xbox 360. So there's... Uh, I don't know. A bit, bit of a dead zone there. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah. <clears throat> then I got to play GameCube. There you go. <laughs> um, my... I, I like the controller, but it was more so... It, less the game 
the less the controller that stuck out to me and more the stuff that came with it the mm -hmm. the nostalgia that came from the games like you know link to the past and uh a couple of the street fighters and some a bunch sure. of just other really neat you know neat little games and that you know that can that you know connect in my brain to the snes all right well let's go ahead and head on to number five number five Number five on this list, it's interesting to me that it made itself higher than its uh, upgraded version. It's the PlayStation 4 controller. So the PlayStation 4 actually made higher than the PlayStation 5, which I find really interesting. Now, I know why I placed it higher. I have not played a PlayStation 5 controller, so I couldn't put it on my list. Uh, but I'm interested to see why you guys decided that the PlayStation 4 deserved higher on the list than a PlayStation 5. The, the PS4 controller is just, it's the one that I use for everything. Um, it's super easy to hook up to a computer, which is most of what I play on. Um, and it's it's carried me through, you know, Soulsborne and uh, roguelikes and all this junk. And it's just really reliable. Um, the... I will admit the little... I love how you talked about it there, like Gandalf talks about his horse. <laughs> it has been my friend through many journeys. Uh, definitely. Definitely has. Um, but it, I'll admit the, the whole, you know, the, the little, like, si top button on it is a little strange, but it's something you can easily get past. And um, just overall a super easy, reliable controller, you know. I will say it's not even on my list. I have never touched one before. <laughs> uh, so I had no contribution and con it contribution to this one. Astounds me that one singular person put it high enough on their list to put it on the list <laughs> against three other people who didn't put it on the list at all. Well, actually that's not entirely true because it's on my list as well. Oh, uh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So but, it was me and Ethan. Uh, it just got rated highly by the people who actually well, know I mean, about well, this. Well, we'll just go ahead and, you know, because this is yeah. a, f a fun thing. Ethan had it as his number one. Yeah. Makes and sense. I had it as my number four. So, I mean, you, you put that together. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's enough to get it pretty high on the list if two people mm -hmm. have it that high. Yeah. And the reason that I had it high, uh, Ethan kind of gave his explanation, so I'll go ahead and give mine. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I had it so high is because it is not one that really sticks out in my mind as being, you know, super uh, interesting or different. And that's kind of the point. Mm -hmm. Like when I play with a yeah. PlayStation 4 controller, I don't have to think about what I'm playing. Yes, it's generic. And, and there's some truth to that, but it is generic because its formula works. Yeah. And it's an improvement over its brethren because the PlayStation 2 controller, great for what it was, but it had those like weird flat paddles that Ooh, didn't always yeah. fit with your hand right. The PlayStation 3, a really good design, still a controller I like. I've spent a lot of hours on it, but it was so light and it didn't feel like girthy and hearty in your hand. The PlayStation 4 got a little heft to it. It's round in all the right places. Uh, it's not too big, not too small. Like, it's just a very mistake-free uh, controller. And so, like, I don't have a whole lot of high highs, but I have almost no complaints about it whatsoever when I'm playing. When I'm playing with the PlayStation 4 controller, I'm thinking about the game. I'm not thinking about the controller, and that's a good thing, in my opinion. And one other, like, parting thing that I will add. The little trackpad on it actually works a lot better than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. Like, I saw that in a demo. I was like, that's stupid. I'm never going to use that for anything. But in practicality, like, if you're wanting to type something out and you don't want to get a keyboard for it, it actually works pretty well. And so there's a couple things in different games that I've used it for that I did not expect. But they used it in creative ways, and I actually think it actually kind of works. So. Yeah, it doesn't do anything special, but what it does, it does really well. Right. It's 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 just uh, it's kind of like that dude that's been showing up to work for sixty years. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mess with anybody. <laughs> keeps his head down. Does his job. You can always rely on him. Like that. That's who the PS4 controller is. It is the workhorse of my controller collection. He, nice. he barely exists, but 
he's but, definitely but if there. he was gone you'd miss him you know yeah and, that, <laughs> and that's kind of the point with it why i put it so high on my list uh right. so let's go ahead and move on to number four number four all right and number four on this list it is going to be the nintendo switch pro controller and I like this controller. It's a lot of fun. I don't use it for Smash because it completely screws me up. <laughs> uh, but, like, I've used it for a lot of other things. It is a nice controller. It feels good in the hand. It's it's bigger, which for somebody that has a slightly larger hands, I mean, they're not massive. Uh, but they're, you know, slightly larger than average. And because of that, it just feels good. And I think it's funny that the Pro Controller really works for somebody with bigger hands. And I think that might actually be an overcompensation because the Joy-Cons are made for ants. And so because of that, I was there. I think they just went a little bit overboard on the other side and I'm fine with it because it worked out well for me. I, I will say as probably the person here with the most experience with solely uh, pro, uh, pro controllers, right. because for a long time, I swore by them. I did not use anything else. Um, See, that's what we in the business call a mistake. <laughs> eh, I really liked it. Uh, they they were pretty good. I do have some slight qualms with just uh, what I what I viewed as like kind of like a lack of sensitivity in the left joystick. Mm -hmm. In in or. In a lot of the models, they just didn't snap back to middle fast enough for my liking. Sure. Uh, That's why we use a GameCube controller. But, but for everything else, uh, it worked re really well. It feels like a really natural setup with the buttons. It's just... Cla it feels like the classic, easy to use. I know exactly what everything is, where everything is, what it all does. No questions whatsoever. Yeah, and the, I, I will say that since you brought this up, my only slight gripe is I don't love the triggers. They're not bad. I, I don't have any, like, major issues with them, but I don't like the triggers quite as much as, like, the Xbox X series. But that's really, like, the only gripe that I can think of. Otherwise, very solid. Game. Well, Im important consideration for the triggers is that unlike the PlayStation or Xbox triggers, they're digital. They're not, they're not analog triggers. Right which is a pretty pretty important distinction and it it affects the triggers designs pretty substantially mm -hmm. as far as i am concerned it is just a bigger slightly larger but le ultimately less comfortable xbox controller <laughs> yeah i i had the xbox x series higher on my list than i did the pro controller but still if i had to switch between the two i would notice very little difference mm -hmm. the reason it's higher than xbox for me is just because I'm used to, this, to the familiarity of where the buttons are. And with A and B being reversed between the two, as someone who has a hard enough time telling between my left and my right, swapping the <laughs> buttons I have to press is just the biggest way to completely mess me up in everything I do. Well, for to, to <laughs> when that point, swapping Seth, between controllers. To that point, Seth, totally agree. And that's the reason that you will never, ever, for any reason, see me play a PC game that I use a controller for and a Nintendo game that I have to use the pro controller for at the same time. I will play mm -hmm. one and then I'll play the other because if I try to go back and forth, I'll just be pressing the wrong button all the time. <laughs> I Give me a solid week <clears throat> to transfer. I have... And I actually like the Xbox's position for the confirm button being the bottom better than I do the Nintendo being mm -hmm. on the I... But that's, that's a preference thing. Mm -hmm. I own... See, I have the again. I have the opposite preference. I I I prefer personally for the yeah. I prefer for the jump button and the confirm button not to be the same. The point that you made earlier uh, about it being uh, large and you know more like the other controllers um, is it kind of works as like a an olive branch to the people who play. Uh, in my opinion, it works as an olive branch to the people who play other controllers is a hey i kind of know already how this works um you know and that's and it makes it easier to transition between systems well i think that's exactly what it was and i think that that's why they marketed it the way they did because they didn't market it as the standard controller they said it's the 
pro controller. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that you notice, and I don't want to get way off on a tangent here, but I do think it's important because it speaks to the controller's design. <clears throat> one of the things that you will notice when they marketed the Switch, they did something very different. Nintendo, every time they have ever done a commercial for any of their systems for the entire time I've been a Nintendo fan, which now is a really long time, <laughs> uh, basically my entire life, the commercials are always kids or kids with parents, but it's never like just parents or adults by themselves. Switch did something very different. It was a bunch of young adults playing the Switch in all and, the yeah. early Switch ads. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that was a fantastic decision. Yeah. Fantastic it, marketing decision. It, it was, and the Switch or the, the Pro Controller speaks to that because it says, here's this thing that you're familiar with. Nintendo's not just for kids. It, it's for them if they want to play it, and we're definitely going to market to them, but here's a controller that fits your hand, that works better for you, and it's going to be more like the the Sony or the Microsoft uh, you um, know, generic one that you could put in here. And I think that's exactly why the Pro Controller exists, is they wanted it to be something that this is not going to be a... Uh, an obstacle for people that want to try out a Switch. Let's go ahead and move on to number three. Number three. So we're in the top three, guys. Getting pretty close to the top. We've got the Wiimote Plus plus Nunchuck. I can't believe that it's so high. Oh, no. How, would, how I, did this get I, so high? I, I don't know. I, okay, <laughs> well, well, I actually, you know what? I'll explain it. Just so the audience has some semblance of, has these guys lost their mind? No, there, there is a reason. Uh, let's see. On my list, it is number six. On Seth's list, it is number seven. On KP's list, it is number seven. Yep. And on uh, Ethan's list, it's number five. So by virtue of not sucking in any major way, and just being like somewhere in the middle of everyone's list, it somehow wound up at third because I guess none of us had much of an objection to this one. I feel like that's an act an an app descri description of the Wii Mote in general. Yeah, it kind of fits, it, doesn't it? Yeah. That is that is an accurate representation of just what the Wii Wii Remote is in general. It was kind of the one that really started. Uh, a lot of motion control. I know it wasn't like the first, but it was the first really it's, big it's one. It's the first mainstream mm -hmm. yeah. video game console that did motion control in like a and made it a central part of the console. Followed mm -hmm. very closely, of course, by the Xbox's Kinect and the PlayStation's. Mm -hmm. I yeah, what it was called. Which Move. I ah. still contend that they released primarily to compete with. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it it just it did everything well enough. Yeah. Like, it wasn't the... It's by far, especially nowadays, like, nowhere near that great of a motion control device nowadays. But at, for the time, it was really good. It was really new. It was super interesting. It worked it, well enough to be consistent as long as you knew how to set up those my, sensors. Hey, is it super precise? No. But can you bowl with it? Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> I could get a strike every time. That's yeah. all that mattered. My, my favorite... I cannot believe I'm saying this is probably my favorite. It's my favorite experience. It is far from my favorite Wii game. <laughs> okay. The game is called Chicken Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> it is... We've gone to a weird place here. It is bonkers. But there is no other controller which I would say better captures the feeling of a gun. There's no other controller yeah. that better captures the feeling of a gun. Hey, the Metroid Prime games, even though they, they, were, they were actually pretty good with the Wii Motion, yeah. like it, it actually worked pretty well. And I'll say this: I know controversial opinion. I, I know I'm going to get all kinds of hate in the comment <laughs> section, but this is my opinion, and I'm sticking with it. Even though I do agree that the HD remake version and the GameCube version of Twilight Princess overall is better it's better than the wii version if you take the game as a whole i have to admit having the wiimote and being able to aim with a reticle makes the slingshot the boomerang the bow way easier to use well with with me skyward sword since we kind of already mentioned it is a huge step forward because it actually lets you use the sword and i know a lot of people complained about that i actually thought it was a fantastic mechanic i thought they did really well with it i mean 
again, I know I know I do I'm doing some hot takes here and I'm not meaning to, but uh, I actually thought that the combat in Skyward Sword is among the best in the Zelda series because of that. And I know it was a little gimmicky and there were some enemies that, okay, well, you have to slash them in exactly this diagonal pattern. Yeah, that got a little annoying. I grant it to you. But like feeling like you were actually in control of the way Link sw swung his sword was pretty cool. And the, it was fun the Wii Remote's design helped that a ton. It did. Because because holding that, that just having the grip, and it the Wii Remote is balanced like a sword. And to be perfectly honest, it's it, balanced it is, like a sword. And I'm somebody that actually does fight with a sword. So it does kind of, like, it transitions fairly well. Uh, I will say mm -hmm. this, though. Uh, Skyward Sword is one of the only games other than Guitar Hero I've ever played standing up. Like, I actually preferred to play standing <laughs> Than I did sitting. You played Wii Bowling sitting down? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I did wow. too. I totally I did. I did not. That, I, I, I do could not. I, I will say that. like you, heresy. Yeah, I have to get, hand it to you, Ethan. You did catch me because I do prefer that <laughs> standing, but my point is I can play it sitting. You just have to angle it right. That, that takes talent. Not I guess. it. And really I, had, good I had a control. lot of time and not a lot of responsibilities <laughs> when I was a teenager. So. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. But anyway. Uh, but yeah, fantastic controller all around really fun you extremely versatile and when i say versatile i don't even necessarily just mean the motion controls because think about this how many different things did the wiimote snap into think about how versatile the wiimote was i know that since i just mentioned it the guitar hero you could actually snap the wiimote into mm -hmm. your guitar hero guitar which was actually kind of cool uh i had a couple other ones they had like the shell for golf or they had the shell mm -hmm. for the sword fighting or the tennis racket uh, those didn't actually change the functionality, but they. But then you had Link's crossbow training, where it had the like attachment to where you aimed oh, yeah. it like a gun. Like it just had so many cool things you could do with it. And then of course well, there was always gun. Yep, gun. Gun is important as well. <laughs> gun yes. is very important because steering wheel. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, the Mario steering Kart wheel. with the steering wheel. Yeah, that was fun. That's going to go ahead and lead us to number two. Number two. Number two on this one, which honestly is a little bit of a surprise to me as well, not because it's not a great controller, but it, I think it kind of had the same thing that the Wiimote had where it just sort of wound up in the middle of everyone's list. It's the Xbox 360 controller. <laughs> so kind of a surprise. Mm -hmm. Honestly, didn't expect it to see. I expect to see it on the list, but I didn't expect to see it that high. But the Xbox 360, it had the jewel, which was kind of cool. It had the big bubble button in the middle. Uh, it had the four rings which also had the red ring of death which everyone <laughs> hated uh that was not so much fun but overall still a really fun controller i still use them i still have them uh in here and because there hasn't been a ncaa football game to come out for the past <laughs> like nine ten years i still use it for that because it's the only way to play a college football game so you know you do still drink bring out the 360 controller for certain things and to their credit my controllers still work well even after i smashed it after <laughs> uh you know oh, no. <laughs> i was yeah i was playing spider-man shattered dimensions and uh just had a really hard time with the final boss because they had very poor level design for the for the mysterio fight and i actually got so frustrated i smashed it on the floor and it still works so thanks microsoft I, I appreciate you doing that for me. <laughs> the, the, the Xbox game. 360 controller is the epitome of Microsoft. It really it is, kind of is. It is Xbox incarnate. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any better way to put that. Yeah, you don't think of the you don't think of the new controllers, no matter what shape or form you you know they take, you always think, oh, Xbox. 360 controller. Right, when you hear yeah. the word Xbox, the controller that is conjured up in your brain is the 360, mm -hmm. not the X series, even though it is objectively a better controller. What What's interesting is, like, how long did the 360 exist before... Uh, 13 years. Yeah, because, like, the, the, the 360, 360 has been around since the dawn of time. Like, that's how <laughs> it feels. It really does. I, was I don't like, know why. The dinosaurs played it, the Xbox It really does feel like... It, yes. The 360, the 360 feels, like feels like it's been around since the Super Nintendo days. And I lived yeah. through the Super Nintendo days. <laughs> it's it's one of the longest lived it, controllers and consoles, honestly, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep, yes. absolutely. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. even, with the red ring, even with the Red Ring of Death. Um, yeah, I think... everyone talks about that. It never happened to me. I was just super yeah. lucky. 
<laughs> Watch, I, I go to play my 360 <laughs> the next time. Now it does that. I, mm -hmm. I think that they had more to do with like how well you took care the, of your system. That's there, there's some truth to that too. The Xbox 360, and as it looks, the Nintendo Switch are slated to be the two longest lasting consoles of all time. And that's probably going to stay that way for a very long time. Makes sense. Yeah, and I understand why. Because, you know, Nintendo, they're, they're getting a lot of pressure to at least announce their next console. I haven't done it yet. And whenever someone asks me a moto, it's like, uh, well, it's still print money. So, like, <laughs> okay, yeah. Still making bank off of it. Why design a new one? I feel you. It's there. like, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it yet. Yet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, you know, that is coming one day. But, yeah, overall, the 360, there's not a lot you can say about it as far as performance nowadays because there's just better versions of the 360 controller out. But props to it, like, part of the reason that the PlayStation 5 is in the direction that it is now and, and the reason that the PS4 went in that direction as well is because of how popular the 360 was. Mm -hmm. And so the popularity of that controller design really changed the way that every company after it designed it. Now, granted, unlike the Super Nintendo or some of the other controllers that really revolutionized controller design afterward, I would say that the subtle difference is with the 360, it was less about actual functionality and more about just ergonomics. Because to this day, I pick up a 360 controller and it feels fantastic in mm -hmm. my hands. But the influence of the 360 controller is felt. The influence of the Xbox 360 controller, as far as ergonomics alone, mm -hmm. is felt throughout throughout gaming as a whole. It's felt in the PlayStation 4 and 5 controllers. It's felt in Xbox One and X series controllers. It's felt in the Wii U and Nintendo Switch Pro controllers. It's mm -hmm. it's a huge huge influence <laughs> one big feature about the 360 that we haven't even touched on that was completely revolutionary and it, it was i think it may be the first controller that did this is that it has the attachment for a headset and mic and so it had it directly in the the controller itself so instead of having to like hook your headset up directly to your console or playing on a pc which i mean granted is a viable option as well it's either way it's probably microsoft <laughs> but my point on all that is, uh, I think that the 360 was the first console controller that actually had that option to where your headset and uh, your headphone jack plug directly into the bottom of the controller for you and you alone as a player. That's part of the reason that the online player, uh, the, the online player experience got so much better with that console. The Xbox 360, incredibly iconic, incredibly influential. I didn't expect it to be this high because there are better versions of this controller that are out now. But honestly, I kind of get it because it just it's such a massive influence on every modern controller that we have today. It was the I OG. Get, yeah, I, I get why it's there. Respect. So with that being said, <laughs> let's go on to number one. And number one. And number one which had a massive lead, the GameCube controller. You asked the wrong four people. We really did. <laughs> the four of us, like, I, I'm thrilled that it wound up number one. I think that it absolutely deserves to be number one. But I, it's just funny to me that this thing, it destroyed every other option mm -hmm. because three of us had it at number one. Ethan's the only one that had it at number two because he's a heretic. But... <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, the GameCube controller, overwhelmingly by far the best uh, controller on this list, in my opinion. But I have a lot to say about it, so I'm going to let you guys talk first, because I'll talk for like 20 minutes so, if you want well, to talk about it. So okay. uh, we'll start with Seth. Seth, you go All ahead. right. All righty. So going ahead, uh, I'm probably the one that was like the late the late comer to this uh, device. That's why I wanted you to go first. You're yeah. the convert. Yeah, I, I'm the convert. <laughs> I, 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 as I mentioned before, when we were talking about the pro controller, I was a pro controller purist for the longest until I found out that it be, it's so much easier to do combos uh, in Super Smash Bros. with uh, consistently with the GameCube controller if I just decide to dedicate myself to getting used to the feeling of it, mm -hmm. which it's. Uh, it, it took a second for me to get used to it, I'll be honest. And I still have a strong distaste for the fact that I can't 
Uh, I don't have a Z button on the left side. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, I really want buttons. On, I want two triggers on both sides. But The fact that it was unbalanced was weird, even for the GameCube era. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, not having that button really bothers me sometimes. But other than that, it is such a responsive controller, all things considered. The joystick always just feels like it'll go right back to where I want it to go. Mm -hmm. There's it's a, very snappy. Yeah, it's very snappy. It goes exactly where I want it to. It's not it's not too smooth, which is kind of what I the feeling I get with the pro controllers. It's just it's like too smooth and just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. This one it wants to always go right back to center, and that's exactly what I want. And that's especially important in Smash Bros, which is part yes. of the reason, not the only one, but part of the reason I think that Smash players, generally speaking, prefer the GameCube controller. I, that and the Pro controllers. Uh, th this this is just a personal thing, but the this the stick on the Pro controller, it's just too wide. I don't like how big the <laughs> button is. Okay, All just right. more of a personal preference thing, but I get it. The only thing the GameCube did not take from previous consoles is its face button pattern. Its face button pattern is unique to the GameCube and the GameCube alone, and nothing since has used it. <laughs> yep. That is true. <laughs> uh, Nintendo patent that as well. No. I'm fairly certain that is the only reason why it has remained in use for so freakishly long. Because there's no replacement for it. <laughs> there exactly. is no replacement for it. You're probably right. That's probably a fair point. And every replacement for it that exists is marketed as a GameCube controller. But the thing is, the GameCube controller was made incredibly high quality, but because of its face button, because of its face button pattern, because of the way its, uh, because of the way its uh, left stick is built, the way its C stick is built, what it's built for, a game that is built to play with the GameCube controller will always unilaterally be a better experience. I recognize that as my own opinion, but it's the right one. <laughs> I'll go along with that. Okay. I'm about to say, <laughs> I, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I disagree with the sentiment, but with the actual word said, I, I don't disagree with the opinion. So here, here's the thing that you're talking about, KP, and I'm going to use an analogy. I think you'll like this. Uh, All right. we'll, we'll see. It's almost like Smash and the GameCube controller go together like bees and honey, or bees and flowers. Like, flowers, at least the theory goes, got progressively more vibrant and more attractive to bees. And the reason that they did is because bees would pollinate the flowers that attracted them the most. Therefore, the flowers that were the most vibrant were the ones that passed on their genes to the next generation. This is a yes. form of natural selection. And so, essentially... I think that that's actually the relationship that Smash and GameCube controllers have with one another. Part of the reason the GameCube controller has survived as long as it has now. Personally, I think that everything should just use the GameCube controller design. I would be perfectly fine with that. <laughs> I, play, yeah. I play every single Switch game that I have with a GameCube controller because of this. But I, I understand that some people just want to use it for Smash, and that's perfectly fine. I think that because it worked so well with Smash, and because so many people want to keep going back to that, Every single time a new Smash game is released on a new console, it is released in a bundle with a GameCube controller. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's so ubiquitous with that genre, or with, with that specific game, that I think that as long as they're going to continue to come out with Smash games, there is going to be something analogous to a GameCube controller that comes out along with it. And it's just weird, it's just weird enough to be charming. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah. It's also the, a huge turnoff for new players. Yep. Fair enough. You know, it's so funny when whenever I'm and, and this is just a anecdotal thing, but I, I still think it's hilarious. When we are in the esports arena, and I'll, I'll even phrase this as a question to y'all. When right. we're playing Smash, what controller do people prefer? Do we need to answer this question? I don't uh, think you do. The, the audience knows, but just go <laughs> ahead and say it anyway. <laughs> It's, it's the GameCube controller. Right, they prefer Every the GameCube time. controller. Whenever I go on different trips where I have the uh, setup with Smash, 
nobody wants to play with the GameCube controllers. They actually get mad that I don't have more pro controllers, and they're like, this control scheme is so weird. I can't play anything on this. I'm losing this match because of this control. And it's so funny to watch the disconnect because it's the exact opposite whenever I'm playing with a bunch of high school kids. Uh, they hate the GameCube controller. They don't want it, but it's because they haven't put in the time to see how well that game works mm -hmm. with a GameCube controller. The and, I'll, and I'll go ahead and say, uh, you know, it, because it, it tracks so well with that, that's why you're seeing that disconnect is because people like Seth didn't see the draw until they did. The GameCube controller works amazingly if the game is built with compatibility with the GameCube controller in mind. Which if is it why isn't, it's awful. Which is why all video games should be designed that way. <laughs> uh, I mean, enough. you just made my argument. But anyway, <laughs> Dark but, Souls with a GameCube controller. But now, <laughs> Ethan, I know, That's I know, not it's bad. I know it's because you're a PlayStation Four guy, but uh, so you're the only one that didn't have it on number one. But you're still a big GameCube controller fan. Yeah, um, it mostly because of nostalgia, um, along with. Because along with, you know, the, the PS3 and the Wii and all that, it was one of the first, my first consoles. All the game really choice. great games and game choices, um, you know, on the GameCube and um, as well as the, the good durability controller. And um, I actually learned, today I learned. Um, today. Yes, today. <laughs> Very recent. Uh, today I learned that it was one of the first with the whole wave dash, wave crash, whatever. Wave, wave uh, bird. Wave bird. Wave Excuse bird. me. The wave bird controller was one of the first wireless uh, controllers. Yeah, right. it was. And and I played my wave bird till it literally broke. Like, <laughs> that controller, I put that through more things. Like you were talking about with your PlayStation Four controller earlier, Ethan. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how I felt about my wave bird. I've been. I'd been through the ringer with that thing. That mm -hmm. was like an old losing an old friend when that one finally died on me, and I never could find a replacement for it. Uh, and the fact that it was silver was also awesome because it's my favorite yeah. color. Hey, uh, but shiny. but you know, I, I couldn't agree more. Nostalgia is a big part of it, and where you talk about it, it's just weird enough to be charming. It's funny because they have a bunch of generic controller things, and I know this because I do a lot of graphic design and artwork for the team. There's a lot of little clip arts of controllers, and they'll either have like a control stick or a D-pad up in the left-hand corner and just a four-button cross on the right-hand corner. And that is iconic, and that's part of it. But the thing is, you can look at that, and it's, oh, that's a generic video game controller. You ain't going to look at one with a GameCube controller button format and go like, nope, that that is a GameCube controller. Like, that's how unique it is. is you see it, you instantly recognize it, even if it's not actually on a GameCube controller itself. Uh, and Super Smash Bros. has one like that. The, yeah, the GameCube do. controller icon in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and I believe in Smash 4 for the Wii U also. Mm -hmm. um, but the GameCube icon, the GameCube controller icon for uh, Smash Ultimate is a shining example of that. Yep. You know, I, th I think about it, That's that's something over the years that Nintendo has become really good at is just weird enough that it's charming. Um, and they kind of, like, they kind of dabbled in it with the N64. Um, I think they went a little too, and, yeah, too they, far. They, and went too far because it, it was just weird. Um, Look at this monstrosity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. I pulled my green one. That doesn't work when I have a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this monstrosity. I don't have three hands. I'm sorry. <laughs> In my opinion, and I actually have one of these here as well. Like, the thing that I love about this is the buttons are extremely responsive, very clicky. They just feel good in the hand. The only minor complaint I could have with it is that sometimes the shoulder buttons here, because they have that deep, like, you can't really tell if you've hit it or not. Um, but, you know small thing. I, I rarely ever have a problem with that, but the reason that I love the GameCube controller so much is because the unique button design, in my opinion, the fact that each button is a different shape and in a different position, I never accidentally hit the wrong button. It is rare, but there are times where I'm playing, you know, Rocket League or whatever with a, with an Xbox controller or with a PS4, where I'm just kind of doing it somewhat absentmindedly, or I just kind of get into a zone, and then I press the wrong button. Never happens with the GameCube controller because I can feel underneath my thumb what the shape of the button is. And so I've never had a 
I mean, not to say I never have a misinput because that happens sometimes too, but it's never the fault of the controller. Like it's always me if that happens. Uh, with a with a GameCube controller, I just I know what button I'm pressing. I can feel it. It's instinctual, and because of that, I just think it's the best controller design ever. And I don't understand why other controllers don't have that feature. I I genuinely don't. You can see the impact that it's had uh, on in the, the their Nintendo. recreations. Well, yeah, well that's the... the thing. Like like the point Ethan is making. How many consoles have an old console's controller come mm -hmm. back and be compatible with the new console? Not yeah. many. No. Maybe not any. I don't. Not that I can think of. Well, the Wii U. Uh, yeah, well, true. yeah, but the Wii U was marketed badly. And that's also still Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> that is still true. Nintendo also. Yeah, it is. And you could use the GameCube controller on the Wii U as well. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but only, oh, but only for Smash Bros. That's the GameCube controller in a nutshell, and that's why I love it so much. I think it's the best controller ever, and apparently you guys do too. <laughs> uh, which I mean, pretty much solidly confirms that the GameCube controller is objectively the best controller, and everybody <laughs> that thinks differently is just wrong. Now, if only it had a second <laughs> bumper. Yeah. <laughs> well, this one does actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, because <laughs> it's a pro. It, it is a pro controller in the shape of the GameCube. Controller. Problem solved. But anyway. Voila. All right, so that's the list. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate it. This one was a lot of fun. Uh, before we leave, very quickly, any parting thoughts on the list itself? Was it a hard list to make? Was it an easy one to make? Were there some uh, unexpected turns that this one took that you weren't, you didn't foresee? Uh, Seth, we'll start with you. I will say I didn't know I actually knew 10 different controllers. <laughs> um, most of the ones I listed, I don't think ended up on the list. Or at least several of them didn't, because uh, I'm pretty sure like one of my favorites was like the joyce uh, like the Atari, Atari joystick. Controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that just... one didn't quite make it. it. It was on the list, but it wasn't top ten. It was like last on mine. Simple, clean, and the way one that button. you're making. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, really, it, it's interesting how it lined up. But honestly, it makes sense. It's clearly biased. Like, the entire list is very clearly biased, right? Don't care. We're, we're Super Smash Bros. players. It's pretty clearly biased. Only a little bit. Just slightly. Uh, Super Famicom and Super Nintendo controllers, as well as the Xbox 360 controller, each of those had a massive, enormous impact on gaming. Yep. And... The order could certainly be adjusted, but I think it's a final list, all in all. There were there were certainly some surprising picks. Um, there's definitely that element of less, sometimes less quality of the controller and more, oh, hey, I remember that from when I was a kid. <laughs> yes. L it may, nostalgia bait, I get it. Yeah, it may not have been that great, but I remember it. Um and there, it's interesting to see just a lot of the different designs that companies have come up with over the years. Um, just there, because there are some weird old controllers. Um, yep. But it definitely, the ones that are at the top are at the top because we remember them. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. This was a, a fun list. Like, the last list that we did was actually pretty hard. Oof. This one was a lot more fun, a lot more lackadaisical. I could kind of just sort of play with it a little bit. And I kind of go back to something that KP said. I think you can argue with the order, with the exception of GameCube, because it belongs at, in first place. And <laughs> anybody that says differently is just wrong. Uh, but you can argue with the order some. Like, I, I don't think that I would have been disappointed if the Xbox X series wound up higher, or, uh, I don't know, even the NES controller had wound up at, like, number two just because of its iconic status. Uh, you know, would I have picked it there? No. But would I be okay with it being there? Yeah. Actually, I, I kind of see why you could you could make that choice. And so, order is a little different, but I think we put together a very solid representation of gaming as a whole. Got a little bit of old mixed in there, got a little bit of new mixed in there. Uh, like you said, the iconic ones tended to, to make it higher on on the list because it was ones that we may not have necessarily agreed with everything about it but it's one that stuck in our mind enough to where it wound up at least moderately high on all of our lists and so you know that's kind of the fun thing about a top 10 is seeing how those kinds of things shake out so i thought it was a good list guys good thoughts appreciate it and uh we're gonna go ahead and get back to the rest of our program this evening so we appreciate it we enjoyed being here
and we will be back and uh I think we're going to take a quick break here and then we'll be back and have another activity after this. So uh, we will see you in a second. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me, I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat. <laughs>